clever. I don't know what the enzyme is that he used, the equivalent of reverse transcriptase, but he has it. Obama has the equivalent of reverse transcriptase in his, in his abilities. And he's invaded. Cells didn't even know they were being invaded. And now they're actually mimicking his perverted worldview. So as I say, I'm thinking about that. And I think, you know, I'm not that unique in some ways. I was a very liberal young man. I was a social worker. I was a teacher, a dreamer, a poet. A poor pressure play that song because it was all true by Frank Sinatra. I was a puppet, a poet, a pauper, a king. So I watched these movies. I just got them back. It says Savage Family Home Movies, 1967 to 1985. And disc one is 67, 68, eight millimeter movies of family, friends, work, travels, and activities. And there's my long deceased father who died in 1970 in his little store in New York City down on Ludlow Street, which is now a big hipster area in the store with all of the characters that I remember it's as though they were living. And then all of a sudden, the next disc jumps to Hawaii, where I went for that one year for, for, for not, to, to earn a master's degree, and I stayed on. My whole life changed. Maybe I became a free spirit. I saw a whole new world. It was an amazing time. It was an amazing time. And I thought about all the millions of free spirits in America and what happened to them and how some of them got stuck like animals who fell into an amber pit, still espousing the same anti-Americanism that is now suicidal. Stuck, they can't change. Rigid, they have Alzheimer's. They've had Alzheimer's since 1968. Many of us, though, emerged and evolved, and that's you, and that's what I'm asking you. Were you a hippie? When did you become other? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. get the picture. A little more, just one more refrain, that's all. I want to hear a high note, I'll come back to the show. Okay, you get the picture. The answer, my friend. My friend is written in the wind. Okay, so many of you remember these songs if you're over a certain age. And I'm not just talking to older people because these songs resonate with people to this day to some extent. And again, I got to tell you, I mean, I'm, I'm marching to my own drummer, so to speak. I made a decision a couple of weeks ago. If you think that I'm going to spend the next year and a half talking about what Trump said or what Carson said or what Cruz said or whether who's up in the poll or down in the poll, you're mistaken. I'm not going to do it. I'm sorry. I'm not a banjo with one string. I'm like a harp with many strings, and I'm not just going to sit here plunking the same string every day. Trump went down, Trump went up, Trump said this, that said that. How could you listen to that? Is that what you really want me to do? Do you want me to just do that day and night? I was discussing it this morning with someone. I said, do you think I'm going to do this till like November of 2016? I'll go out of my mind. First of all, I can't do it. So it's a moot point to even discuss it. I cannot do it. Cannot do it. I didn't come this far in life to just become a puppet and a parrot of, of a website. I don't think that my audience wants that from me. Now, maybe you do want that, but you can get it somewhere else. So if that's what you want, and I know many of you are interested in this on a daily up and down, you're going to get it all you, till you can't stand it anymore. Enjoy it. So I made a decision to go with what interests me. Now, some days I may do that. But today I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Today I went into a new direction. I came up with new ideas. Obama is like a retrovirus. And I explained what I'm talking about. I try to explain it to you from the epidemiological point of view, from the social point of view. I told you that my day started with me reviewing home movies that I've collected which my whole life. I used to have a little eight millimeter, then a super eight millimeter. Who didn't? Raise your hand. See many of you are smiling. I, I make believe it's a live show. If I were to say that in front of an audience of 5,000, I could see a lot of smiles in the audience right now. Many of you have these 8mm, super 8mm movies, and they're golden today. They're collectibles. 
So I've been putting them together for years, and I found a wonderful gentleman who does this professionally, and I got it back. It's like a new toy. I can't wait to watch them this weekend. Savage Family Home Movies, family, 8 millimeter Family, Friends, Work, Travel, Activity, Volume 1, 1967-68. And there's my father in his store. And you know, looking at it, he's not the man I sometimes portray on this show, or I think he was. This is another thing I want to tell you. I looked at myself at that age. It's like, holy God, I was that good looking? Look what time does to a person. <laughs> I mean, you look at yourself in your 20s when you're an older man, you say to yourself, good looking isn't even the word for it. I had brains. Forget about just being a, a good looking guy. I was very smart and I'm still kicking. In other words, I'm still performing. I'm still up there. I'm on the stage. I'm on the tightrope. And I look at myself and I say, don't look back. Michael, don't look back. Watch out, you will turn to a pillar of salt. There's always that danger. But I can't help it. I have the kind of kaleidoscopic mind that can go backwards and forwards anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me. I don't think it's going to do very much damage. I've been redoing my journals, editing them, and getting them ready for publication next year. So I, I, I look at these movies, and I start to think about how what a free spirit I became when I moved to Hawaii, went there for a graduate degree for one year. I was supposed to stay one year, earn a master's degree, come home. It was an, a, a National Science Foundation fellowship for science teachers. One year, come back with a master's and be a better science teacher. And believe me, they pick people based upon brains then, not upon affirmative action. And I, I got an NSF grant. And by chance, I applied to five colleges, and one of them was in Hawaii. It's another separate story that's very interesting. All the others rejected me. I didn't, get the, I didn't win the scholarship, rather, in the other schools. I won it here, but listen to this. I didn't even know I had won it, so weeks and weeks go by. And I hadn't heard from them. I figured they also rejected it. I was very depressed. I wanted to get out of Queens in the worst way. I could not see riding that subway one more day. I thought I'd throw myself under the third rail. The, the, the smell of the subways, the screeching of the cars. I used to stand between subway cars to get some fresh air. I couldn't wait. I couldn't stand being a regular guy. I couldn't stand it. The whole Brooks Brothers suit, folded newspaper. But look, you got to make a living. I, I wasn't on welfare. So anyway... Weeks later, a month later, I call the University of Hawaii to the chairman of the department. I said, blah, blah, blah. I, I assume that you rejected me. That's how I was then. I would never do that today because I reversed it and say I was accepted. Why didn't you send me the acceptance? I said, I'm sure you rejected me, but I never got the letter. And he said, who was that? Oh, no. He said, we sent you the acceptance letter four weeks ago. Well, I jumped for joy. Suddenly, I knew my life was going to be a color life, 3D color. It was going to go from black and white Grimm's fairy tales into a three-dimensional movie in a kaleidoscopic, beautiful place called Hawaii where I could work idyllically. Now, of course, it didn't work out that way, but nevertheless, it opened up a whole new world to me. And as I say, I became a freer spirit. I changed. I looked like a different person. I acted like a different person. I was a different person. People say, oh, no, you're a phony. Well, if you're stuck in who you were when you were born, I can't help it. If you want to be infantile your whole life, don't, don't blame me for it. Humans are made to evolve, my friend. See, there's phases in an insect. There are phases in a dog, from a puppy to adult. And many of you listening to the show are politically puppies. For some reason, you were infected with communism or socialism or anti-Americanism, and you don't even understand that you're stuck. But what you really don't understand is that you're suicidal. That attitude in a world of radical Islam is suicidal. The problem is, is that the press is also insane. They're stuck in the 60s. Their bosses are all stuck in the 60s. Movies, movie makers, geniuses, geniuses stuck in the rhetoric, the philosophy of the 1930s. Stuck, stuck forever, ruining themselves, ruining the country, ruining the world. So very much like a prophet, uh, of old days. I'm trying to tell you what's going on and I'm trying to tell it to you through a very personal story and I tell you today the 60s were in all bad and how free spirits and this was I thought a very keen insight of mine were not all bad because it enabled millions of us to become free of spirits and then I came to a revelation that is unique to me which is that a free spirit is more easily invaded or manipulated than a rigid spirit and the communists entered our spirits 
just as retroviruses infect humans causing diseases from the common cold to AIDS. And Obama is like a retrovirus to America. He has infected the body politic with his hateful anti-American views and invaded many other cells or people with his nation destructive ideas, but they don't even know that they are like the pod people. They're like Martians. They are robots from another planet marching to the tune of the self-destruction. They don't even know it. And so we go to the callers where I say to you, were you a hippie? And when did you become somewhat conservative? What happened to you? Uh, let's go to Judy on KBET Radio. Judy, welcome to the program. You're calling out of what, Las Vegas? Yes, sir. And I want to tell you, I'm still a hippie in many ways. I still dance in the rain and then under the stars. But Jimmy Carter coming to office made me conservative. Jimmy Carter was the beginning of this whole Iran problem when he overturned the Shah of Iran. Iran was not a problem until Jimmy Carter helped. The no, no I, I understand all of that. I've explained it myself, but I don't want to get into, into the politics. I want to ask about you. You're not telling me Jimmy Carter is what made you less of a hippie, is, are you? Not less of a hippie, but more of a conservative. So you dance in the rain out in the, in the desert? Is that what you do? When it rains, I go out in the rain and I dance. Do you still consider yourself a free spirit? Oh, very much so. Now, how else do you define? How else do you find? How else do you define yourself as a free spirit other than by dancing in the rain? By being decent to all human life. I'm a nurse. Maybe that that um, educates what I do. Now, uh, listen, nurses are all saints to me. Nurses are saints. I have never met a nurse in my entire life that I didn't worship in terms of what they did for me and people around me. I cannot stand never. what is happening today in the world. We used to be able to say hello to people. We didn't have to worry about getting our brains blown out or being called politically incorrect for the color of our skin or not getting hired for the color of our skin or whatever it might be. Yes, in many ways I'm still a hippie, but I am a conservative thinker. Perhaps it was because my father was career military and lies at Arlington today. There are many reasons. So Judy, you, are, you, are, you typify what I suspected was a, a segment of my audience, how large I don't know, nor does it really matter, of 60s hippies, 70s hippies, free spirits, whatever you want to call them, who became conservative and listened to my show for that reason, right? Yes. So, wait a minute. Now, here's the important thing. You obviously listen to other shows, and I'm not going to compare or contrast. That's not the point of the show. But you hear a resonance in me that tells you I'm a kindred spirit to what you just, just described, sort of. Isn't that right? Yes, and in your writing. So, in other words, you feel me move around, and emotionally I move around and whatnot. And that's who I am, and that's what reflects on the show, and that's what I'm going to remain. I'm not going to become a rigid one-string banjo that just talks against Obama or just talks about Republicans. I will never do that, ever. And I don't, I don't know, is that what you want people to do on radio? If you did that, I wouldn't be listening to you. I don't so you're so you're the segment of the American listening public, and there's a lot of crossover, by the way. Just remember that. I'm not knocking anyone else in radio. I want you to understand that. There's a large uh, a body of people who listen to radio in and out all day long, and they get what they like from different shows, but there's a large crossover audience, and then there's a very special audience, a specific audience for each host that has its own audience that won't listen to anyone else. And I think, Judy, you represent, for me, that special, specific audience, correct? Uh, in many ways, yes. I do listen to other people when you're not on the air because I'm in the car driving to see patients. But All right, Judy, you're, listen, you're a saint, and uh, I hope I don't need your services <laughs> in the near future. I don't often get to Las Vegas, but I thank you very much for calling. Oh, I meant to give Judy Government Zero. Although it's not ready yet, I'm going to start taking names and send them out the minute the books arrive in the warehouse. We'll do that. I'll get one to Judy another day. 855-407-282. Let's go to New York City now. Chris on WABC, go ahead, please. Tell us your story. Yeah, it was a pot-smoking, acid-dropping, Grateful Dead show, all cops were pigs kind of guy when I was in college. But, uh... When you get out of college and you start working and paying taxes, you start saying, where's that money going? And that changed me. And today what? You're a conservative? Today I would say I'm a conservative, but I still uh, 
have a little bit of that rebel in me because my bumper sticker says, I love my country. It's the government I'm afraid of. Mm -hmm. So you're a, a rebel with a cause. <laughs> a little bit, I guess. <laughs> All right, Chris. I'm glad.